All right, we had a very interesting day today. Uh, we had morning spikes, we had morning panics. Uh, I captured a small, small, small percent uh, of the action, but I'm so much prouder of you guys. Um, you know, I'm still trying to calculate all the students who banked today. Uh, obviously, some people lost some too, but I'm more interested in what's working. I show you all these students, not just to brag, like, look at me, look at all my students. It's to point out what people are doing to make money in this market. Because I don't know if you realize, but this is the worst start to any year in stock market history. And people who watch CNBC and watch Bloomberg and read the Wall Street Journal, guess what? They're freaking out. So I want to show patterns that are working because pretty much every single day uh, in the past three weeks now, there have been several solid plays straight out of my DVDs, long and short, morning, afternoon, some even midday. And it's good to go over them to show you the potential profit angles. Um, and obviously no one's going to be perfect. I, I think I exemplify very imperfect. But if you're on the right path and you have the right mindset, uh, you know, sometimes you can really nail it like I did CDRB uh, last week um, or being, you know, really close. So let me start with the first trade today, NXTD. Uh, this was a potential short for me, uh, frankly, just because it's following my classic supernova pattern and I'm looking for a big morning panic and a big first red day, which is today. Um, I did not want to short pre-market. Uh, a lot of people ask me, why am I shorting a pre-market? Because Interactive Brokers was running out of shares to short. So I'm only trading with Interactive Brokers and E-Trade. E-Trade didn't have any shares to short. Interactive Brokers did have shares to short pre-market. But it was going from like 60,000 to 45,000. And when I shorted, there were like 30,000 shares left. So knowing that, and I only shorted 2,000 shares. I'm not taking all the shares. Remember, I'm trading with such a small account. But knowing that the shares are going fast and it's first come, first serve. You can reserve shares to short with Interactive Brokers if you have a six-figure account. I don't have a six-figure account anymore. So I'm back with the masses, you know, third class, Titanic. I'm down at the bottom like... Open up the freaking gates, right? Let me out. At least give me a chance so that I can be like Rose and Jack, if you watch the movie Titanic. So I'm looking for shares to short, not because I think that it's necessarily going to crash, but because that's my only option. So for me, I'm shorting at pre-market because, first of all, it was fading a little bit pre-market off of the 130s. Um, so there was a chance that it would just, you know, straight up morning panic. But more importantly, I had to. Otherwise, there would be no shares to short at all for me. Um, I think actually some shares did open up uh, right around here, right around the open. So in hindsight, which is always perfect, you know, I didn't have to short. Um, but at the same time, you know, what you learn from me is that never, ever follow my alerts, okay? Long, short, cut losses quickly, buying, success, whatever. I'm trying to show you structure. So when I make a trade, when I short pre-market, it's not so that, oh, I want everyone else to follow my trade. It's to show you, because I know that I'm going to be doing a video lesson later recapping, why am I shorting pre-market? And on a stock like this that I think is going to crash, I'm shorting pre-market only because that's when there are shares to short. And there was a chance that it could just fade, and that would be my only chance to profit. As it turned out, it faded, and then it uptrended for pretty much you know, 45 minutes into the market open. And I thought that there would be a morning spike. So I covered roughly break even, I made like a penny or two, because I wanted to protect myself. I shorted only because there were shares to short. I covered only to protect myself. As it turned out, I could have shorted anywhere in here and I would have been dead on right. So I had the right idea, but because I'm limited with my number of day trades, I'm limited with the number of shares to short, these are very useful lessons for people with small accounts. You know, big traders, they're laughing. They're like, ha, 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 Tim, you know, I just went in and out. I covered some, and then I reshorted, and they're laughing. And that's not useful for you, many of you who have small accounts. So you have the same kind of mindset, or I have the same kind of mindset as you guys with a small account. It's all nice and easy when you can go in and out, in and out, whatever. It's much easier when you have a big account. But when you have a small account, I want to show you the obstacles. That said, I'm not 
regretful of my cover and I'm not regretful of my short because I knew that I'd be doing a video lesson. I knew it would be a good video lesson whether I made money or not. I want to explain why I would only short pre-market. Not because I want to but because the shares were running out. Um, better shorts, you know, a lot of people shorted it into the failed morning spike here in the 130s and 120s and they covered for a quick 20, 30 cents a share, 20, 30, 40 percent. Um, freaking awesome. So the pattern works, you know, I got a little sidetracked by the, the subtleties of this, you know, dealing with a small account, but it's a win because you guys saw it, you banked and you learned and you see exactly, you know, what prevented me from having a big win. I mean, it, it would have been nothing huge. I mean, I had 2000 shares short at 125, even if I had somehow held on to it. And again, I don't regret my cover because I want to protect myself when it's not heading in my direction. Uh, I probably would have covered right here at like 105 and locked in like 400 bucks. So it would have been nicer to make the 20% um, as several of you guys did. But in the grand scheme of things, this is the beauty of trading with a small account. I'm not motivated purely by dollar profits. I'm motivated to teach you the most useful lessons. Um, and I think that's that's very useful. A better play was ZFGN, uh, which was spiking pre-market, but I didn't really watch this near the market open because I was dealing with NXTD, and frankly, because this is a $10 stock. You know, it's, it's out of my price range for my ultra small accounts. Um, but those of you who have somewhat bigger accounts, you know, maybe under 25,000, but like 10 or 15,000. Guess what? You buy a thousand shares pretty much anywhere in here. Uh, you know, it's tough to buy when, when it spikes up pre market like this at seven and is downtrending all pre market. But when it hits this level here, you know, in, in the mid eights, you have strong volume right at the open and it's breaking out past this 840 level and, and more importantly above this 875 level. You know, this is a clear buy. Um, and when my account gets bigger and I can buy, you know, let's say a thousand shares of this, you know, I'm buying this breakout over this little high, uh, probably a thousand shares at like 880. And, you know, this is at 10 a.m. So it's a little bit of a delayed morning spike. But by like 10, 10 a.m., you know, I'm in at 880 and I'm out at, let's say, 10 or 1050 and I'm making a dollar a dollar 50 it goes all the way up to 1180 so you can make three dollars a share on this breakout of of the pre-market highs uh, 880 to 1180 in what is this this is literally 10 minutes so three bucks a share in 10 minutes and I got to give props to Brendan he is the student of the day he is a recent trading challenge student uh, just became a trading challenge student uh, like a month ago um, and he's been cramming all my DVDs, and he says, here are the results. And he bought it a little early, actually, at 825, and he sold it at 1130. Good patience. And I was like, awesome job. And he's like, I'm through most of your DVDs, wanted to jump out for a small loss. Your teaching kept me in and kept me profitable. That takes balls, man. So props to, to Brendan. Uh, he also said, oh, I, I guess I, I quoted that already. Um, and also, Carlos, huge, huge, huge trade here where he's buying and then actually shorting. So you can play the volatility both ways here. Uh, this is a nice morning spike, but it's also, you know, if you look at the longer term chart, it's an ugly long term chart. You shouldn't be too aggressive on the long side. And that's probably why I'm not long overnight because it's a high price stock and because it has a terrible long term chart. But you can, you know, really solid traders and the best traders Go long this three dollar run up and, and take either a dollar, two dollars, or three dollars, and then you know you can make two, 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 three dollars on the downside here. Uh, it's a lot choppier on the downside, so I would suggest for you beginners, you know, it's a lot easier to buy these morning spikes. Um, but look at Carlos. His name is Conscious Warrior in chat. If you want to congratulate him, uh, he at first what was his first buy? Uh, he bought it in the eights at 860, so nice, nice breakout buy right near uh, where I was talking about earlier, and he sold it in the tens, so nice profits here of like 700, and then he shorted it at 1075 and covered it at 975 and made another dollar a share. So awesome job, you know. I know he's been studying my DVDs and video lessons. A lot of people say you don't want to study, but it's these profits, these trades are made due to preparation. Okay. They're profiting because they are so successful in their preparatory work. 
I know that sounds weird. You, it's just like, Tim, the chart is so volatile. Well, there's a lot of volatile charts, and volatile charts are very scary. But if you study enough volatile charts, and I've cataloged volatile charts for the past you know, decade, they become less scary, and you begin seeing angles of where you can profit on the long side and short side. Um, and also, I got to give props to this guy. I can't pronounce his, his screen name. That's on you, Rohit Bahadarwawaja. Uh, but he said, followed your supernova strategy short at 1042, covered at 950. So thank you. And thank you. Also, uh, I like this. NB Creamer, um, he's another challenge student. And he says, love your teachings. I'm up 2200 today. And ZFGN and OPTT. So let's talk about OPTT for a second. Um, and those of you emailing me asking about the sale, uh, I'm not even going to show you the sales pages anymore for the newsletters. You know, tomorrow, uh, all the prices are, are increasing. My programmers are doing it. So if you want to take advantage of the sale, you can still do it while my programmers change everything. Um, but I would suggest you, you lock in the pricing for Tim Alerts or, or Penny Stocking Silver because literally tomorrow, everything's going up. Um, OPTT had this big spike here uh, right around 1055. They came out with a positive press release about their, their technology. You know, this is a former supernova, um, not in the past, you know, 100 days, but in years past, you know, it, it really spiked up a lot if it can get the volume up. And this is the first big volume day. Um, this could spike again tomorrow. It, it held its gains pretty well. I saw it spiking from, from 120 all the way to 240, but it was, it was too quick. I bought it on a dip here. Um, I tried to buy it at 202 with E-Trade. And this was a, a problem. Um, I still have to actually talk with them because now I'm counting the pennies because I have such a small account. I have a $2,000 account with E-Trader. Now it's, I guess, like $2,500. Um, but I tried to buy it at 202 on the $0.40 cent a share dip. And the whole goal was that I, I thought it would dip and then you know retest the highs at 240 ish uh, Usually stocks, when they're spiking, they don't just spike once. Um, with breaking news. Usually they spike once and then dip and then, you know, this one actually turned out to be a perfect double top. So this was a good example. I'm finishing my work on my spikeability DVD. You'll see many patterns of these double tops. Um, but I, the key is not to chase it at 240. Um, so I tried to buy it at 202. I actually got an execution at 210, which was kind of pissed me off because it's not really that great of an execution. But, you know, I was trying to buy it on a 20% dip. Um, and if I'm buying it at 202, uh, you know, if it goes under two, then I lose. I was going to cut losses at like 198, 197, and lose like 50 bucks. And then if it goes back to 240, you know, I make 350 bucks. So you have good five to one, six to one risk reward. But as it turned out, I got executed at like 210. So really only 30 cents of upside and like, you know, 15 cents of downside. So really only two to one risk reward given my kind of crappy execution. So be careful when you're chasing a hot stock, you know, pennies matter with risk reward. Um, as it turned out, you know, whether I bought it at 210 or 202, it did go back to 240, um, but then it couldn't break out. So a lot of people ask, how do you know if it's a top? You never really know, okay? You know, sometimes like if you're trading ZFGN, I know some people uh, who were buying it here, you know, on this little bounce pre-market, um, or they were buying it, you know, on, on this one right here uh, in the afternoon thinking that it was going to retest the high. You never know which which bounce is going to really go up that much. I mean, you, you have odds, right? Like pre-market is probably not going to go back up this high. You have to consider where ZFGN has come from. Yesterday it was a $5 stock. So when it tries to bounce here, you know, it's already up nearly 100%. Pre-market, you're not going to have a lot of volume. The big spike came with the big volume right near the market open. So you have a higher percentage of spiking with bigger volume. Uh, OPTT had you know multiple attempts with big volume here, but when it fails to break the new high, you're out. Um, and I actually tried to get out at like 240, 239, didn't get executed. I got executed at like 232. So I made like 20 cents a share, uh, 180 bucks after commissions. Not bad for you know, a little $2,000 account. Um, but it, it was kind of disappointing. You know, you also have to kind of consider where in the day it is. If you watch my Tim Line DVD, you know how I'm going to trade midday around 11 a.m., noon, noon p.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm not going to be very aggressive in my holding times because 
while this had breaking news right here, you have to understand most spikes in the middle of the day fail. Um, so always, you know, be be conscious of what's happening. But I like NB Kramer between the two of them. He made 2,200. Um, here's Punch Out Pilots also. Uh, he was in ZFGN at 838, uh, out at 1030. I already talked about Brandon. Um, Tyson, this was awesome. Tyson says, this, thank you. I made over 5,000 on my first day trading real money. Thank you so much for your great lessons. And he posts a screenshot. He's trading NXTD, um, and he lost 120 bucks. So I think he actually uh, got caught short uh, near the market open like I was. But ZFGN, uh, you know, he made over 5,000 bucks on his first day trading with real money. So big ups, Tyson. That's, that's pimp. Um, and then also, uh, this was cool. I, I saw this, uh, Spock stocks said never thought the lessons would pay for the annual fee and DVD and only the first two months of trading. You know, the, the profits can really add up quicker than you expect. Sometimes it's, it's the first two weeks or two months or two days or two minutes, sometimes two years. Uh, the whole key is trying to be prepared for these kinds of patterns. So in all of these patterns, OPTT, uh, ZFGN, um, and NXTD were all happening when the overall market was just in the absolute gutter all before noon. You know, we got a nice little market bounce back into the close. Um, but a lot of people are like, Tim, are you worried about the overall market crashing? And the answer is no. You know, there, there's still tons of volatility. Also, KOME was a, a morning spiker. I warned against this uh, right near the market open. I was like, there's not that much volume, you know, to really sustain a big jump. This one has spiked big in the past. Um, you know, so so be conscious of, of what it takes to really spike. It got up there, but, you know, the, the big spike here, well, I guess this was back in 2014. That was more of a bull market. But the latest spike, you know, it, it, it had, what, triple the volume? Let me see. Eh, like double the volume when it really spiked up there. So look back and, and see how the volume is tracking uh, with recent spikes. You know, K1, K, K-O-N-E has spiked so many times before. I don't mind people trying to buy this at the market open. Uh, but when it fails here, you know, it even actually had a nice little attempted uh, secondary spike. But you see the double top here. When it fails either on the first time or the second time, there's no way you should give it a third time. And smart people actually took the reverse position and shorted. And you can do this on any of them. You know, OPTT, when it double tops here at 240-ish, short it. I'm not going to get offended if you trade against me, okay? I'm not like one of those traders like, you trade against me. I don't care, okay? I'm not always going to be right. And a lot of people who were shorting this in the 230s, 240s, guess what? You made an easy 20, 30%. On the way down, so that turned out to be a better play than my dip buying opportunity. So I'm not always going to be right. No trader is ever guaranteed to be right. Feel free to go either way, long or short, as long as there's volatility. You know that's the beautiful thing. Go in with a plan and go in with volatile stocks. I got to give props to a few more people. Uh, Omega Phone made five hundred forty-five dollars in four minutes. Uh, Victor. Uh, Great NXTD short. This is the trade that I should have, would have, could have had. But Victor did better than me, so I'm proud of him. Uh, here is uh, L2 Oil. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Are you, are you, is it like loyal with a two? I don't understand. But he shorted at 120, covered at one, made 200 bucks. Uh, that's cool. Uh, this one's cool. Poolman was in uh, ZFGN really early in the sevens and out in the eights. That's fine. It's okay to sell too soon. At least you learn. The throne was in at 877 out at 1030 for a nice $1,300 gain. Uh, we already talked about Conscious Warrior. Uh, Scorpios timed K1 well. 430 out at 490 made 600 bucks in a few minutes. That's an adrenaline kick, right, Scorpios? Uh, Bentley Tech was in at 877 on ZFGN uh, out 1084 for a $400 profit from my sick day at home from work. Freaking awesome. Uh, here's Polo made $600. Uh, total $745 gain for the day on two trades on ZFGN. Um, I already talked about Punches Pilots. I already talked about Brandon. Here's Johnny. Um, shorted uh, ZFGN at 1068 out of 1018, but still made, you know, a thousand bucks. And he's scared. And you should be scared. But it's kind of cool to make a thousand dollars while you're scared. 
Uh, already talked about NB Kramer. Oh, this was another one. NB Kramer shorted OPTT at 225, covered at 187. That's a better trade than me. Um, you know, I made 20 cents of upside. He made what? 30, 35 cents of downside. Uh, KG shorted OPTT at 226, covered at 209. Uh, from the Hong Kong airport. I've had very good luck from the Hong Kong airport. I have a video on my phone I need to upload where I made a few thousand dollars. I love that airport for some reason. The business class lounge. Uh, I don't remember what airlines. Maybe it was Emirates. No, it was Singapore Airlines. Freaking awesome. Uh, here is Suffmeister covered uh, OPTT in the 170s from 212. Awesome. Made 30, 35 cents a share. Uh, NB Kramer also covered again. Uh, his short on OPTT from 180 at 164, um, and now he made 3,000 on the day. And then G21MD uh, was in uh, ZFGN at 930 out at 980, so he made 50 cents a share. So I want to show you the angles here. You know, this is what's hot. This is what's working every single day. Outsiders will say penny stocks are random. They're uh, you know manipulated. This is all luck. If you study enough, you know, I, I know that you don't want to study. I know you just want hot picks. I know that there are entire chat rooms all about, you know, posting breaking news and alerts. And they're just like in here, out here, uh, you know, different stuff like that. For me, it's all about patterns and what patterns work. You know, when NXTD does a morning panic, you know, I was surprised, frankly, that they couldn't spike it a little more. But then again, you know, the overall market was crashing. So... I'm not totally surprised, but when a stock goes from 20 cents to $1.30 and they're a total pile of shit, they have been doing toxic financings their entire life as a company, uh, guess what? It, you know, a, a big crash is panic. This is a, a big crash is, is predictable. Uh, it's not random, you know? So I got my timing wrong because I had to play it safe because I have a small account. The approach that I had, the mentality, the strategy was all dead on. And even when I personally mess up a trade, you guys can do better. And I don't wish that, you know, negativity on people. It's not like, oh, I didn't make money, so I don't want anybody else to. I want as many people to make money on this stuff as possible. There's way too much negativity with penny stocks. We are all in this to try and make money and to prove the masses wrong, that this niche can be consistently profitable. Every new millionaire student that I have proves that. And as I've also mentioned in the past few days on, on some video lessons, every new millionaire student that I have, frankly, helps me reduce my workload because I used to give like three or four webinars a week to challenge students. Now I'm just giving one because now my millionaire students are also giving one or two. So the trading challenge still gets three, four, sometimes five webinars a week, but my workload is reduced a little bit, which frankly I could use. You know, you can hear it in my voice. I'm nasally, I'm overworked, but at the same time, you guys see these patterns day in, day out. What's going to be hot tomorrow? I don't know. I want you to be in the chat room pre market, 9 a.m. or 9 15 a.m. Eastern. See what's being talked about. See which stocks might be overextended. You know, NXTD was, was definitely the most overextended today. ZFGN. It, it probably my guess is tomorrow it's going to do another morning spike. Um, I actually thought about you know being long overnight this, but frankly it's just uh, you know too expensive for me. You know it's it it, it really is uh, you know it's tough for me to to put too much of my small account in there. And I also I use two day trades today, so I'm I have to be careful how many more uh, trades I can do. Um, so you know overnight trades are going to be my my favorite, but with a, a stock like this that's very choppy in a market that can either open up or down 1% or 2% or 3% um, in a higher price stock, I don't think that it was worth the risk for me to, to have an overnight position. Uh, but I'll be watching this tomorrow. I'll be watching OPTT, you know, which, which could do another squeeze and, and probably is another good short uh, if it does do a squeeze. And I'm sure that there's going to be five or you know seven or even ten new plays tomorrow uh, with new news and the key is watching what happens pre-market this is January this is a very special time of the year um, so you know we, we have plays pretty much every day it's just a question are you prepared 
you know, can you be like these guys? You know, these guys are not making money just randomly. This is not like going to Vegas and betting on black or red and doubling your money or losing everything. These are very uh, skilled trades. They're very strategized. They're very meticulous. And you can see here, you know, people are making a dollar a share, two dollars, sometimes three dollars a share. Um, so don't feel like you have to be perfect. The whole goal is to make a few hundred or a few thousand dollars pretty much every day. And you can see that it's it's not just, you know, happening to one or two people. I mean, there's hundreds of students doing this. I can't even keep up in the chat room with everyone saying everything. And our chat room just got to give you guys props. You know, you nailed it, okay? From NXTD to ZFGM, OPTT I found in the chat room because you guys were talking about the breaking news. So everyone should be in the chat room. We now have over 1,200. I think actually today we even got over to 1,300 uh, traders in the chat room. No other chat room even comes close to our size. Um, so pretty awesome. I will see you guys in the chat room bright and early tomorrow. Again, congrats to so many of you banking. And even if you're not banking, even if you're paper trading, even if you're just learning, even if you're skeptical, that's fine. Just keep watching and, you know, take a, a look at these patterns. Focus on volatile stocks and big percent gainers. Don't listen to a word that the companies say about their technologies. Uh, just use them for their volatility and, you know, try and make a good chunk of the move long and short every single day and you see because i have more millionaire students than anybody else this stuff can add up a lot of people say that this is you know making two hundred dollars oh that's puny well two hundred dollars here three hundred dollars there five hundred dollars there this is how you grow a very small account and nobody else teaches about how to grow a small account most people just ignore everybody with small accounts and yet that's the vast majority of the world so don't ever feel you know, lesser, okay? Most of the best traders and best students that I have have very small accounts at first. They have the right mindset, you know, the, like, you got nothing, so you there's nothing to lose. There's, there's not really that much risk. That kind of mentality where you have the dream where you can actually grow it to become a millionaire and, you know, screw all the negativity. Screw all the people who say that you need 25,000. It's not just about day trading. Uh, you know, it's it's just taking advantage of the opportunities when they come up. Some days, I mean, what what was it? NXTD, ZFGN, KONE, and OPTT. So we have four really uh, you know volatile, low price stocks, and there were more, but these were the the four main ones. Um, you know, today, and and I captured a very small percentage on on one of them. Um, but this is it. This is penny stocking. And it's a beautiful game, and I'm, I'm really excited that more and more of you guys are getting it. All right, I'll stop rambling. I'll see you in the chat room. See you.